This is the land we come from. Stolen, illegally occupied, abused. But like our people, alive. Over 500 years of attempted genocide, our people have resisted. We have resisted assimilation. We have resisted colonialism. As Ongwe Honwe, Ilnu, Anishinaabe peoples, as people of the earth, our legacy is the land upon which we stand. Our old stories say Nogelwiskap, who was the first man who came to this territory and who was our, um, I guess, pathfinder, who, who got everything ready for the two legs to come here. There was agreement with creation that um, we as two legged were going to come here and live within uh, balance and within means with the four legged, with the wings, with the, you know, the crawlers, with the swimmers. We go back as a traditional people thinking, well, this is our, our, our agreement, our, our, our treaty with creation. Um, have we been following that treaty? Well, no. You know, we've, you know, we've messed up. Line 9 is owned and operated by Enbridge Pipelines, a major oil and gas corporation in Turtle Island. This pipe is part of a larger system of pipelines starting in the heart of the tar sands and occupied Korean Chiboyan territory in so-called Alberta. Enbridge has already begun reversing this pipeline, increasing its capacity in order to pump 300,000 barrels of bitumen through it per day. Line 9 starts in Anishinaabe territory in Amdenong and follows the north shore of Lakes Huron and Ontario, also impacting neighboring Métis nations and snaking up along the St. Lawrence River where it meets a refinement facility in occupied Haudenosaunee territory in so-called Montreal. Line 9 is coming through our territory, it's coming through the Haldeman Track and it is threatening our entire uh, communities, all of our people and our lands and it's bringing the fight from the tar sands, ground zero, one of the most destructive projects on the planet. Um, it is bringing that destruction and what's going on there to our lands and our territory. But that isn't the only pipeline battle coming to a head. TransCanada plans to reverse a 4,500 kilometer frack gas pipeline dubbed the Energy East and retrofit it to carry 1.1 million barrels of diluted bitumen to the Irving refinery on occupied Willistook territory in so-called New Brunswick. From there, they plan to build a marine terminal to ship the Dilbit via supertankers, threatening the entire eastern seaboard. The Energy Beast pipeline requires construction of new pipe nearly all along its path, as well as the construction of land and marine terminals, pumping stations, and for corporations like Suncor, Irving, and Enbridge to increase their refining capacity. This is where we belong, you know, and if you're going to poison our waters, where do we go? You know, where do, where, where do we go? So we got to protect it. We got to keep it clean. We got to protect our waters, our hunting grounds, our medicine grounds, you know, and there's no two ways about it. This west to east pipeline is, is another, uh, I think it's going to be one of the worst uh, things that could possibly occur within our territories, especially if there's like spills. There was part of the prophecies about this two-headed uh, snake coming from west to east, and um, we thought it was a physical snake. Mm -hmm. Well, it is a physical snake. It's that pipeline that's going to be coming across, and they said, we have to kill that snake. From the point of extraction to the point of refinement, the tar sands and their pipelines threaten the health of our territories, including the lakes, the streams, and the peoples that they feed. Fracking is an issue in my territory because it affects us because it destroys the water and water is the foundation of who we are as a people. Without water we're unable to be who we are, we're unable to practice our ceremonies, we're unable to fulfill our obligations as Ilnu people. Resource extraction is the process of erasing our relationship with our mother and commodifying her in the interest of capitalism. We must remember the impacts of projects like the tar sands. It affected us in various different ways, uh, varying from uh, social economic impacts to uh, environmental impacts and ultimately uh, death. Bitumen is a corrosive solid which has been primarily used as asphalt. To transport bitumen through pipelines, it must be diluted, which requires the use of gas that comes from the process of hydraulic fracturing or fracking. Fracking takes the lifeblood of Mother Earth fresh water, 
and desecrates it by adding chemicals and sand, targeting shale deposits and injecting this mixture deep into the belly of the earth, at incredible speeds and pressures to literally fracture our mother and cut her open to release the gas and petroleum that was stored there. The destruction and natural destruction, it all has a consequence and it impacts the people of the community. It removes people from the natural cycles of what they should be doing with the land and how they should be treating the land, how they have to live with the land. When our land is destroyed, it's definitely a kind of genocide. And they know that, you know. That's why they want to destroy us, because we have that connection. But you know, there's too many strong people and like, you know, people are awakening now and they're seeing that. And so they're just trying to destroy it faster and faster. What I call this process with companies taking over land and resources is environmental racism because this is not just happening in Amjanang where we are, our health and our environment is affected by these companies being so close to our houses. It is happening all over Canada. It happens all over the world where Indigenous people are um, suffering because of these companies selfishly extracting resources for money. This sickness of capitalism and abuse of our Mother Earth, known as the tar sands, is fueled by frack gas. Resistance to all forms of resource extraction and their infrastructure, pipelines, pumping stations, seismic trucks, marine terminals, gas wells, and their corporate headquarters is necessary. As Indigenous peoples, we have a responsibility to our Mother Earth, to the faces not yet born, and all members of creation to ensure that the death machine of colonial capitalism is abolished. All over Turtle Island, our people are standing up on our lands, refusing assimilation and asserting our inherent titles. We are Wet'suwet'en people and the territories that they're talking about belong to our people. They don't belong to a tribal council, they don't belong to bands, they don't belong to industry and they certainly don't belong to government. If anybody wants to try and force a pipeline through our territories, they're going to meet resistance. And if they want to put contractors out here, they're going to be putting contractors in harm's way because we are going to protect our lands. It's important to stop these pipelines because they're going to destroy and deplete everything that we are. It's, it's eco-genocide. It's, you know, it's destroying us through destroying everything that we have. I think what you have to do is you have to, um, you have to go home. You have to really take time to go sit outside and lay down on your mother and she'll tell you what you have to do. I think that the nation-nation relationship, when it's decolonized, then that's when we're really gonna see an uprising. That's when we're really gonna be bound together by things other than physical. You know, when we have that spiritual connection with each other, like that's some really strong shit. What needs to happen is direct action. I think people need to physically get out there and show their support for the earth and not the tar sands destruction or the pipelines destruction or the government. We tried protesting, you know, we tried, um, you know, marching around, dancing around malls here and there. You know, we tried court, we tried, you know, legal ways, you know, Strong, hardcore direct action is the only way to stop these guys. We're resisting colonialism. We're trying to bring back who we are as Indigenous people and it's important to assert your rights and it's important to assert your inherent authority and assert your title over the land because non-assertion equals extinguishment. And if we do not assert who we are as a people, then we are exterminating who we are. We are caretakers. We are warriors. We are people of the earth. Stop the pipelines shut down the tar sands imagine that the states were occupied by china imagine that defendant fan will put you in a lot of imagine that you got gunfire instead of fire imagine that they dumped you in a ditch with your daughter imagine that for this china's troops were all applauded imagine those surviving in your family had to watch it imagine they were labeled insurgents for trying to stop it imagine they received the same treatment and dealt the darkness imagine that the leaders of this country couldn't do shit imagine after all this it was pointless trying to prove shit imagine having no voice when elections Came around, imagine even if you did each other's word and back out. Imagine now who the last line I wrote was about. I'd imagine you pictured a black president's charming smile. Now imagine being one of them safe, secure China citizens, watching the leaders put into the deadliest of provisions yet. And that line said you're a domestic terrorist. You could be locked for life plus no one.